Hello friends, David here. Welcome back to this YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about PayPal and why I think it's a highly attractive opportunity. So for today's video, because I respect your time, I don't want to hold you hostage, I'm just going to give you the bottom line first. And if you're keen to stick around to look at the deep dive analysis, let's do it. So here's the bottom line. For PayPal, it's a highly profitable company. It's strongly growing, although the price valuation may be a bit steep. Now, based on my DCF, which is the discounted cash flow, again, you need to do your own due diligence. This is not a financial advice. It makes a lot of difference between doing research and not doing research. I'm not saying this just for the sake of saying it. You really need to do your own due diligence. Anyway, based on my DCF, the price is 270 per share. So 20 years ago, when you talk about online payment, buying things online, there's a massive fear factor attached to it. People were skeptical. They were afraid that it may be a scam. What if I make payment already, the item didn't arrive or it didn't arrive safely, it got damaged halfway through. Isn't it better if I just visit the physical store, make payment and get the item immediately rather than making payment first and then hoping that the item will arrive safely two or three weeks later. So what is considered a norm, something that we do every day today, was once considered a daunting task with a lot of massive fear attached to it. It's pretty much like how we treat cryptocurrency today. A lot of people still fear it because they do not understand about it enough. The process is still not mature enough yet. Now, of course, when you talk about online payment, you definitely need to talk about PayPal. After all, PayPal was one of the earliest companies to popularize the concept of online purchase to rationalize paying things online. They are the first company to rationalize and make this process of online payment a mainstream process. Remember the days when people used to make online payment with check or money order? Definitely I don't because I'm younger than that, but that I have some recollection of that. So can you imagine how inefficient that is? I mean, come on, nowadays who makes payment through check, right? Unless you are buying a property or something like that. Here you have PayPal and just come around and say, hey, why don't you just make your payment through email? As long as you have a credit card, you can make payment or receive money through email. Now, PayPal came as a merger between Confinity and X.com. And as you know, who is the X.com founder? It's none other than Elon Musk. You guessed it right. And what about Confinity? It's founded by these two brilliant guys by the name of Max Levchin and also Peter Thiel. Which, by the way, Peter Thiel, as you know, is also co-founder of Palantir, one of the earliest investors of Facebook before it became popular. So, you know, these kind of people, they are so visionary, they spotted opportunities way ahead of the time. Definitely do not want to bet against this kind of people. And of course, PayPal eventually went public at year 2002 and eventually bought up by eBay later that year. However, this also meant that PayPal's growth was also teetered to eBay. So with this purchase by eBay, it also meant that the opportunity is also severely limited. This means that they were deprived of opportunity from partnership with Amazon, with Walmart, with Alibaba and therefore this defined their growth. And of course, in year 2015, PayPal got spin off by eBay and therefore the PayPal that you see today is an entity on its own. It's a different entity than what was 20 years ago. Now, what is PayPal? What does PayPal do or what is their business model like? Well, PayPal serve as a digital wallet and also they serve as a digital payment platform. They let customers pay how they want to pay so that merchants don't miss a sale. PayPal also allow payment through credit card, through debit card, PayPal, Amazon's Venmo, Zoom, and also buy now, pay later service, and even payment through cryptocurrency. On the merchant's end, they help merchants manage payment processes and risk, transfer money, streamline financial operations, and also reach out to new customers through their multiple platform. And in return, they earn a transaction fee from the merchants when customers make an online purchase. PayPal's revenue stream comes from transaction fee and also value-added services, such as when you pay in a foreign currency. However, 90% of the revenue comes from transaction fees. Now, let's take a look at the financials. Now, if you look at PayPal's financial, revenue has basically doubled in five years' time, while the COGS, the COX, is 50%. This means that they have a gross margin of 50%. What is interesting is that even though the revenue doubled, but operating income almost tripled, meaning to say over the same period, they're getting more and more profitable. This is good, but I want to show you something even more interesting. If you look at the net income over the past five years, it's almost 4x, it almost, it almost quadrupled from 1.4 billion to 4.9 billion. This means that their business is getting even better and better at being profitable. Now, revenue doubled, but the net income, which is the bottom line, it almost quadrupled, 
This means to say that net income has increased from 13% to 20%. This is a 55% increase over the span of 5 years. Asset to liability ratio seems healthy, 74 billion versus 52 billion, nothing unusual there. What is interesting to note is that they have 20 billion in cash equivalent while their long-term debt is only 7.9 billion. This is a 3 to 1 cash to debt ratio. What this means is that they can just pay off their debt if needed when interest rate increase next year. Now moving on to TPV. What is TPV? It's total payment volume. One of the metrics to measure growth is through TPV, total payment volume, because PayPal's revenue is derived from 2-3% to of these sales. The past 5 years we have seen a healthy growth. TPV, which is the total payment volume, have almost 3x from 354 billion to 1.2 trillion. And what is interesting to note is that their revenue has grown 2.3x instead of 3x, which is slightly lagging behind the TPV growth. There's a reason to this, I'll share this in the later part of this video. Total net new active accounts have grown by 15% to 416 million accounts. And another matrix to measure success is how much transaction per active account, also known as TPA. Basically, it means that for the same amount of customer, how much sales is being captured. And for this matrix, we see a 10% growth in TPA, from 40 billion to 44 billion. So what we observe here is not only that there is a new addition of new clients, but also for the same amount of clients, there is more transaction being made. Now, if we look at the quarter three financials, revenue has definitely slowed down in the past two quarters. So we want to continue to monitor this trend. What we know is that for the past five years, the CAGR, which is the compounded annual growth rate, is at 17%. So with the past two years, it's also at 17% CAGR. So let's see, moving forward, how does their growth fare against this benchmark? This decline could be due to the eBay split has come into full effect. Because as you can see in the management report, what they say is that revenue grew more slowly than TPV in the last nine months due to a decline in eBay's marketplace platform, which typically charges a higher rate. So this means that not only that there's a decline in TPV, but also the percentage of commission that they charge have also reduced. As PayPal loses some of its eBay customers, which previously they could charge a higher percentage of the fee. But the eBay effect is likely to be minimal because if you look at eBay's contribution, it's getting smaller over time. If you look at the TPV of eBay, it's only at 18 billion, which is roughly 7% of the total revenue. I derived the TPV of eBay by deducting the total TPV minus it with TPV without eBay. So in this case here is 247 billion minus 229 billion. So similarly, you can see one year forward in Q3 2021, one year later, the eBay TPV is at 10 billion, which is 3%. So you can see that this TPV from eBay have drastically reduced. Moving forward, we'll still see the impact of eBay's exit in the near term, but it is slightly minimal over time, maybe around 8% of the total revenue. Fortunately, with this eBay exit comes with more growth opportunities such as partnership with Amazon's Venmo and also the acquisition of PayD, which is a leading provider of buy now pay later service in Japan. They also have a new PayPal app with additional services and also cryptocurrency payment. And in fact, PayPal's TPV and revenue growth without eBay is at 39% and 28% respectively, which is faster than their overall total growth rate. So hopefully with this high growth rate, it will continue whereby the non-eBay business will be big enough to fully dilute the impact of the eBay's exit. Now let's look at the valuation. Looking at their guidance, PayPal should close at 24 to 25 billion this year, which is around 15 to 16% growth over the last year. In my normal case scenario, I'm assuming a growth rate of 17 to 18% across the next five years. This is quite conservative given that there's a partnership with Amazon next year along with other acquisition. PayPal have been growing at about 17% for the past five years without any partnership deal. So this is a conservative estimate. For EBITDA, I'm assuming the current EBITDA margin of 21% with slight improvement over the years, which I think is more than achievable because they have increased their net income by 55% over the past five years. If their net income, which is the most bottom line, is already at 20% this year, it is way too conservative for me to assume an EBITDA at 21 to 23%. But anyway, let's keep it that way. 
Discount rate, I'm assuming a 7% based on the WAC calculation is around 6.5%. So my share price based on a conservative growth rate at a multiple of 25 is at 190 per share. And based on this share price, you can still expect an annual 7% ROI. Or in other words, you can expect the share price to go to 269 in the future if the present value is not being factored in. In my best case scenario, I'm assuming slightly more aggressive growth of 20 through 25%, with a 1 to 2% improvement in EBITDA margin and a similar discount rate. The share price should be $260 to $270. Without the discount rate, it should be $358 per share. Now, if you look at tip ranks, which is the price target set by the top 7,000 analysts in the United States, the share price average is $272 with the high end at $340, so for our valuation, we are not so far off. Lah. One last thing to note is that all these value investors will claim that the forward PE ratio is high at 52x, which I agree is a bit steep, but this seems to be justifiable given that they just need to grow 20-25% to moving forward in the next 5 years to achieve a reasonable PE ratio of 21x. Previously, when PayPal was tied to eBay, their 5 years Kegel was already 17%. So with this partnership with Amazon's Venmo and then the acquisition of um, PayD and also a host of other opportunities, I do not see how 20 to 25% in the next five years is not reasonable. Furthermore, this business is highly profitable as you can see that the net income has 4x in the past five years. Personally, for me, PayPal at $190 seems like a reasonable entry point. After all, even at the worst case scenario, I can still expect a 7% per annum growth rate. That's the worst case. But what about the best case? The best case is I can expect a 40 to 60% upside. Anyway, I hope you like what you have seen today. Do subscribe so that you do not miss out content like this. Hit the bell notification button so that you do not miss out any of this content. And yeah, I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Take care. Invest safe. I love you guys.